Hi everybody, welcome to the first video out of two looking at wage determination in a perfectly competitive labour market. It's important before we start drawing all these diagrams looking at where wages come from in such a market that we understand the characteristics, the assumptions we make when we are talking about a perfectly competitive labour market. These are very easy to understand because they are just like the characteristics of a perfectly competitive product market but now just applied to labour. So we start by saying that there is a, a large uh, number of potential workers and employers. Lots of firms out there that are willing and able to hire workers and a huge number of actual workers out there looking for jobs. We assume that labour is homogenous, there is no difference in skills and qualifications between workers and we assume that all workers have got the skills and qualifications needed to take any job out there. Uh, so in that sense labour is perfectly mobile. We assume there is perfect information of all market conditions for workers and for firms. For workers, they know what the going wage rate is, and for firms, they know the skills, the qualifications, the productivity of all workers out there. We assume that firms are wage takers. They've got no control over the wage that they can offer to their workers. They take it from the market. So where demand equals supply, where the wage rate comes from, firms must take that wage and offer it to their workers. There is no incentive for firms to offer a higher wage rate than that because all workers are homogenous. So if they... Uh, issue a higher wage to attract better workers, it's not going to work because all workers are the same. The wage rate that the market sets is equal to the MRP of the workers in that industry. So if a firm charges a higher wage rate, it's costing them more than the marginal revenue product brought in by that worker. Pointless for a firm, silly for a firm. At the same time, workers can't demand a wage rate higher because all workers are homogenous. There are lots and lots of workers, so firms will just employ somebody else at the going wage rate. For firms, there is no incentive to offer a wage rate below the equilibrium wage rate set by the market um, because workers will then just go to a different firm who is offering the going wage rate which is higher and therefore the firm that issues a lower wage will not be able to employ anybody. So firms therefore are wage takers in a perfectly competitive labour market and we assume there are no barriers to entry for workers in that there are no extra skills or extra qualifications needed to take jobs and there is no barrier to exit for workers either. If they wanted to leave a profession there is no notice period they can leave completely free of charge without having to wait at all. So important that you learn these. You might think these are very extreme assumptions and that a perfectly competitive labour market is a very extreme thing. But the reason we learn it is because it's a benchmark. A benchmark to compare what real labour markets are like. What the degree of competition is like in real labour markets and therefore what wages are like in real labour markets. If they are very similar to the outcomes we get in perfectly competitive labour markets, we know that that labour market is very competitive. But if the wages on offer are very different, then we know there might be some market imperfections. That's why it's important we study this. Keep watching my next video where we look more specifically at where the wage comes from in a perfectly competitive labour market and the implication for firms as a result. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in that next video.